Life is dull, it's nothing but one big lull. Then presto, you do a skull and find that you're really. She sighs when you're feeling like the toy on a string. And your heart goes ring a ding ding, ring a ding ding, ring a ding ding. So, it's late. We have more caps than we know what to do with, courtesy of the late Van Graffs. Madam Cassidy here just down a third bottle of whiskey in the last 10 minutes, and Vegas is right in front of us. Anyone feel like going mountain climbing? Sure. <laughs> Someone's looking to cash their chips early. Piece of shit. Uh-uh, I don't think so. God, you guys are gullible. Of course we're heading for the strip. Alright, get your passports out, and remember, if they try to do a cavity search on you, decline. Politely. Submit to a credit check, or present your passport before proceeding to the gate. Trespassers will be shot. Yeah, believe it or not, I did actually witness your little demonstration earlier. I would say police brutality, but something tells me that phrase isn't in your vocabulary banks. Well, here's my totally legit passport. Please don't take your time scanning it, thank you. Thank you, sir. You may proceed. And apparently right. you took my request very seriously. I appreciate that. Uh... And I guess you're not gonna bother asking for my friend's passports. Well, it turns out I paid for a family passport that's good for four adults, a robot, and a cyber dog. Now that's what I call a bargain. This is top-notch security here at the New Vegas Strip, where time is a drop, no illegal trespasses for miles. Holy Christ, this place is going to hell. Well, this might be easier than I thought. Time to put your murder faces on, ladies and gentlemen. Things are about to get very messy. Having said that, this is just a poor text. Come on, buddy, you've had your chance. Uh, oh, wow, that is one determined corpse. Well, I hate to tell you, man, but it's not going to be worth it after we're through with this place. Okay, seriously, guys, if you're having second thoughts about this, back out now. I'm pretty sure I'm going to die for this, but hey, I don't have any plans for tomorrow morning. Not one for being subtle, are you? <laughs> what? Look around you, lady. I don't think being subtle would do this place justice. Now, are you guys with me or not? Because at least one of these casinos is getting burned down tonight. And I mean with real fire. Not some cheap light show like that one over there. Oh, shit. You've come for a piece, haven't you? Welcome to New Vegas. Ah, uh, yes. We take one step into Vegas and we get greeted by Victor. Hands up who saw this one coming. Not Cass and Veronica, obviously. They haven't met you before. Seriously, how are you getting ahead of us so fast? Are you teleporting? Is that a thing now? Oh shucks, partner. I suppose it can't hurt to let you in on my I little secret. Drink. Old Victor wouldn't be much use stuck inside just one Securitron. No, I can move from one to another with the snap of a finger. Pretty nice trick, ain't it? Just don't ask me how I do it, because I don't know. And you will probably say the same thing when you're gunning us down in the next five minutes. Don't ask me how these bullets are coming out of my hands, guys. I don't know. Okay, why don't we just skip to the important part. What do you want from us? Consider me your personal welcome wagon. Now hear this. The head honcho of New Vegas, Mr. House, is itching to make your acquaintance. Just head for the Lucky 38. It's the big old tower shaped like a roulette spinner. Wait. What? A face-to-face -face meeting with House, huh? NCR would kill to be in your shoes. What do you think he wants? Bowling partner? Uh, I think we can safely rule out that possibility. Then again, it would explain why he's got a robot telling me this instead of, you know, himself. Well now, it was Mr. House who made Securitrons like me. Seems the least I can do is pass on his message. Don't know. He'll be waiting. Well, that's just changed everything. I was hoping the element of surprise would be enough for us to reach Benny's casino at least. What? But it looks like the big guy's already Leaving watching already? us. God, I feel like I'm playing a game of chess with 10 missing pieces. And they all happen to be mine. Sure hope you know what you're doing. Uh, were you not listening? I don't know what I'm doing. That's the point I was trying to make. My plan didn't really go much further than pulling out a gun and start shooting at this point. Now I feel like an idiot for lecturing those Vicky and Vance imitators. Fuck. I guess we don't have much choice except meeting this guy now. My whole plan just went straight into the radiation pit. All of it. Boop. Didn't even get to use my one-liners. On the bright side, we get to enjoy these dazzling lights for a bit longer. Are we feeling like moths to the candle flame yet? I got a pressure in me like Hoover Dam. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Feel the power of greed and vice, everybody. Let them flow through you. 
If you need help with that, consult your nearest drinking establishment. If you're short on caps, just bash your head against the wall a few times. The effects are usually the same. Okay, Victor, this better be good. I can only hold off vengeance for so long. Well, howdy, partner. Good to see you again. Boss is waiting for you upstairs, so get a move on. Well, open the door, then. I hope this guy understands basic courtesy, by which I mean free drinks for all of us as a welcome gift. I see you brought some friends. Sorry, partner, but they're gonna have to stay outside. And then the fight started. See, what you've done there is put yourself on the death list of three heavily armed people in the course of a few seconds. That's actually impressive. But hey, what do I care? House makes the rules, so I guess I better comply. I'm just gonna leave you out here to mingle with my friends. Come back soon now. Don't worry if they start pulling out hammers, by the way. You've got bodies to spare. Oh, okay. Evidently, all the restoration budget went towards the lights, and there was nothing left for lubricating the goddamn doors. Oh, holy Christ. Seriously, though, guys, if you value your life, don't start taking your frustrations out on Victor. Something tells me physical pain won't bother him nearly as much as it will for you. I'll sit. Should have brought something to read. Can't say I couldn't use a break from you for a while. Well, then feel free to go nuts at the casino of your choice. In fact, why don't you guys make a competition out of it and see who can lose all of their money first? It's a game with no winners and everyone gets fuck all. Huh. Well, I have to say, this is an interesting choice in decor. Old world greed with a touch of haunted mansion. It's definitely unique. Yeah, I feel like I'm about to enter a prehistoric shrine guarded by a hermit or something. Is there going to be a ritual? Maybe the sacrifice of a virgin or two? I don't think the original designers intended for this place to be this sinister, but they probably didn't anticipate you guys. Well, hello again, Victor. Where to, partner? Uh, wherever house is, of course, as if I have a choice. According to a new report, violent crime is on a sharp decline in New Vegas. The report credits the decline of the population of fiends in the area. Penthouse floor. Wait, that's it? He's not gonna say who was responsible for that? I fucking knew it! First the NCR and now the press. Freedom of speech is overrated compared to factual accuracy. Well, hello, sugar. Mr. House is waiting for you in his office. And what are you supposed to be, his secretary? If so, you do realize it's not exactly professional to call visitors sugar, no matter how devilishly handsome they might be. I'm Jane, one of Mr. House's girls. We keep him entertained. We don't get many guests lately. Perhaps we can entertain you as well. Entertained? Okay, so you're not a secretary, which is just as well, because I don't see how you can do paperwork with those hands. Unless you're a different model with the optional pencil-pushing attachments. Why, I'm a Robco PDQ-88B Mark I Securitron, you silly goose. We're the finest in personal civil robotic security on the market. A market that doesn't really exist anymore, so that's not exactly a difficult position to stay in. So how's turned this place into his personal fortress? Although a vault might have been a better choice, to be honest. This is the Lucky 38 Resort and Casino. Or it used to be. Mr. House has kept the place locked up tight for ages now. Nobody comes in or out. Yeah, nothing except for a very strong wind. Do you guys have a window open or something? Either that or the soundproofing around the glass is wearing off. I swear to God, this place is falling apart. Once again, House's restoration priorities are screwed. But why am I even bothering to tell you this? You're probably incapable of criticizing that guy. Why, Sugar? He's the maximum utmost. If it weren't for Mr. House, we wouldn't have this fabulous wonderland of New Vegas, would we? A wonderland you can't even enjoy. Considering how your AI was written by an egotistic maniac, you're awfully fond of the guy. Well, of course I am, silly. Mr. House is just the smartest, most wonderful man there ever was. Why, did you know he single-handedly reclaimed New Vegas from all those nasty tribes that used to live here? Well... He single-handedly sent in his Securitrons to do it, but that counts in my book. I'm not surprised in the slightest. I mean, anyone who can be that devoted to someone who probably doesn't deserve it are either brainwashed, in love, or in your case, programmed to do so. Sugar, I may be a robot on the outside, but on the inside, my neurocomputational matrix is an exact copy of Mr. House's favorite girl. Uh, well... Congratulations, you just added a new layer of complexity that nobody needed or frankly wanted. So, when you said you keep him entertained, 
I'm assuming you didn't mean playing movies on your face. Mr. House has a lot of needs, Sugar. I take care of all of them, and a lady doesn't kiss and tell. So, you mean you? Oh god. Oh god! Did House buy you from the garret? Is he that special customer they mentioned? Uh, okay, alright, exit this conversation right now. I only managed to forget that whole fiasco by drinking Cass's special whiskey. I don't want to go through that again. Then maybe you shouldn't pry into a lady's particulars, hmm? Stop it, please, just stop it. My psyche is pretty messed up already, thank you very much. So, is this what happens to people when they have all the money in the world? They've tried all the conventional pleasures, so now they want something more... Uh, unusual? <laughs> this guy needs a hobby. Urgently. Not many people know this, but Mr. House is one of the world's biggest collectors of antique snow globes. If you happen to find any out in the wasteland, you can bring them to me, and I'll add them to his collection. You'll get a reward, of course. In fact, one of Mr. House's favorites went missing when we moved the collection. If you have a look around the Lucky 38, you might even find it. Snow globes? Well, that's convenient. I was hoping I'd get to offload these at some point. Traveling merchants can only offer me so much for something that's essentially useless. Here, I have two. You do? Why, that's just wonderful. I'll take them and put them with the rest of the collection. Well, you can leave my payment with Victor. I'll collect it from him on the way out. Now, if you don't mind, I think I'd better get a move on. As much fun as it is talking to a mobile TV screen, I should probably speak to a person now. Anything you like, sugar? Well, I have to say, this whole fiasco in the Mojave is certainly changing my perspectives on robots. I used to think you guys are all just stone-cold killing machines, but now I realize you are just as weird and somehow perverted as real people. Ugh. Now, you on the other hand is probably just the former. Oh, and what the hell is this? <laughs> I'm going from speaking to one monitor to speaking to a different monitor? Wow, I'm really moving up in the world, aren't I? Well, good evening to you, Mr. House. I do apologize for the wait. You were probably getting a bit impatient over here. It's difficult to tell, really, when you're just a static image, so I had to make assumptions. Now, how do I get you out of standby mode? This meeting has been a long time coming, hasn't it? You've come a long ways, literally, and I suspect figuratively as well. I have to ask, now that you've reached your destination, what do you make of what you see? Frankly, right now, I'm wondering if I'm talking to a person or just a pre-recorded message, but I'm hardly surprised either way at this point. But as far as the strip is concerned, I'm still not sure if this is real or just a fever dream I'm having. The lights alone feel like I'm having a stroke. Oh, come now. Don't play the fool. Vegas has fools enough. A superfluity of them. They're what makes it so profitable. They come to Vegas chasing penny-ante dreams of high living to feel like they're big shots, like they're winners. You see that you and I are of a different stripe, don't you? We don't have to dream that we're important. We are. Holy crap, you have been watching my every move, haven't you? How else would you know the best way to tempt my ego? Well, I'm not making it that easy for you, mustached man. You don't know shit about me. Oh, don't be coy. You've been playing a high-stakes game ever since Victor dug you out of the ground. Don't be afraid to admit it. Admit what? The fact that for some reason I'm the only one who can get things done around here? The fact that I still get paid next to nothing for it? Or the fact that I'm hearing voices in my sleep? Uh, actually, ignore that bit. Look, if you want to do business, then get on with it. I've got a casino to burn down. Uh, no, actually, ignore that bit as well. The business is this. One of my employees has stolen an item of extraordinary value from me and I want it recovered. Simple enough. Wait a minute. You're talking about my stolen package, aren't you? Oh, well now, how valuable is it compared to Benny's casino? Cause I'll happily get that back for you if you would uh, turn a blind eye to a few indiscretions I'm gonna be committing. If it's any consolation, it'll be an even brighter light show than what you already have. My only concern is the recovery of the platinum chip. What happens to Benny, I leave to your discretion. When you bring the chip to me, I will pay you four times the delivery bonus stipulated in your contract. How's that? Uh, not great, because that original contract was ridiculous to begin with, and considering how much of my own money and quite a bit of blood I've already lost over this whole thing, four times that amount is hardly enticing. Very well. Five times the bonus. 
Not one cap more. That doesn't even cover the entrance fee I would have paid to get in here. I, I, I mean, the fee that I definitely pay completely legitimately. Uh, in other words, I'll take what I can get. Well enough. Return to me when you have the platinum chip in your possession. Uh, Any final matters for uh, us to discuss? Okay, no offense, but how much did you pay for this setup? I mean, can you even hear me right now? Huh. This is the same network that's controlling an army of killer robots. Best not to think too hard about that one. Seriously, is this a passive-aggressive way to tell me to fuck off, or can I get a few more details? What did you wish to know? Oh, hi, you're back. That was, uh, perfectly normal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nothing disturbing about that. I, I was going to ask who the hell Benny actually is, but if you need to get some help from the IT department, then by all means, I can wait. Benny has led the chairman ever since I recruited his tribe seven years ago. Until his recent misbehavior, I planned to make him my protege. Maybe if I'd begun grooming him sooner, none of this would have happened. Well, you're certainly not the first person I've met who doesn't fully appreciate talent until it's too late. Why the hell would you even need someone like him anyway? First Victor, and now him? Are you too good for the common people or something? To achieve my aims, I require a capable human agent to perform certain... tasks. I knew Benny was ambitious, even ruthless, but I believed he would do the job so long as he was incentivized appropriately. Obviously, I miscalculated his drive for supremacy, but in any case, you've come along. A more than suitable replacement. Whoa, hold on a minute. When did this become a thing? If I knew this was a job interview, I would have worn a tie. Actually, what am I talking about? I don't want to work for you. You could have intervened back at Good Springs, but no. You wanted to see how many bullets my skull can deflect as part of your sick recruitment strategy. Why didn't Victor intervene sooner, you mean? Good Springs is a bit too far away for me to reliably control a Securitron agent by remote. I can send and receive packets of data at best. Victor's combat algorithms determine the proper course of action. Benny and his thugs were more than a match for a lone Securitron. When he alerted me, I instructed him to approach the site after Benny and the others had departed. Oh yeah, that's really comforting. I feel like recommending you as a potential employer to all of my friends already. So much so, I can't possibly see why Benny would turn his back on such a lovely boss. I have to think that he found out about the Platinum Chip and mistakenly convinced himself that he could use it to his own ends. One of the problems of a tribal workforce, I'm afraid. No intuitive understanding of how complex technologies can be. Right, so I'm gonna add pretentious to my list as well. You do realize job interviews go both ways, right? I have no obligation to accept your terms. So, if this chip is so complex and we're all so ignorant about it, why don't you enlighten me? It's a very special item. There's nothing else like it in the entire world. It was lost a long time and difficult to find. That's all you need to know about it for this stage of our enterprise. Fulfill your contract, deliver the chip, and good things will come your way. Wow, you're right. Forget tribals. With that level of secrecy, even the nuclear physicist will be completely ignorant regarding this thing. Do you want me as a protege or just a busy man? Because frankly, I've had it up to here with being the latter. Give me some more details for Christ's sake. You might keep an eye out for any computers that Benny's been using. Maybe even a computer lab of some sort. Oh, so we're going from vague to cryptic now, are we? I nearly die for this thing. Plus, I killed a lot of people since then for arguably the same reason. I think I'm entitled to know exactly what it is. That's simply not true. I am the only person to hold any rights pertaining to the chip. I designed it, and I paid for it dearly. To develop that chip, I spent a sum of US dollars. Not the bottle caps that pass as currency these days, but a sum beyond counting. For decades, I paid salvagers to comb the ruins for it. And when it was finally discovered, tens of thousands of caps spent to have it brought here. We know how that turned out. Complete your contract, and it will be the last time I pay for the chip. Save your questions for them. Uh, am I supposed to feel sorry for you now? Uh, just because you spent maybe 10% of your annual income on this thing? Oh man, please, I'm gonna have an emotional breakdown at this point. Uh, considering how apparently important this thing was, you could have hired, oh, I don't know, a bodyguard or someone to escort me in the first place. You realize you were just one of many couriers. The rest of them 
dummies, so to speak? Add to that many thousands of caps worth of mercenary protection to screen your avenue of approach? Had I used an armed caravan to transport the chip, I might as well have been announcing to the world, this is important, attack this! I didn't want to attract the attention of groups like the Great Khans or the Brotherhood of Steel. Alas, the real threat was closer to home. Yeah, so close is literally across the street from here. Not to diminish my importance in all of this, but you've got no excuses for not sending in your robot army now. Frontal assaults on casinos? Not good for business. In any case, Benny would see it coming, and all he'd have to do is hold the chip up and point a pistol at it. Our foremost advantage is that Benny doesn't know that I know he has the chip. Let's not squander it. Fine. It's not like I would have let you take away my chance of vengeance in the first place. So what's it gonna be? I can only assume you'd rather I didn't burn the place down, which is disappointing, but I guess hanging the fucker outside the window by his own entrails would be just as interesting. Come on, give me some suggestions here. It won't be easy. Benny is always surrounded by at least four bodyguards, except when he's in his private suite on the 13th floor of the tops. 13 floors up? Nobody's gonna see the body unless they have a pair of binoculars. I'm gonna need an inside man to publicize this first. Surely you've got direct control over some of them. It's more complicated than that. The chairmen share what you might call a... tribal affinity. Look for a man named Swank, Benny's second-in-command. He's always been a reliable, if unimaginative, employee. Do your best to convince him that you're working under my auspices. If you have evidence of Benny's crimes, show it to him. Oh, so we're gonna be getting rid of a traitor by promoting another traitor. I don't see how this is gonna bite you in the power outlet anytime soon. Come to think of it, can't you at least send Victor over to tell him about this? If he's gonna suddenly pull out a gun in defense of his boss, then I'd rather not be the one to experience that first. By contract, Securitrons are to enter the casinos only when invited by the three families or if other extraordinary circumstances arise. The moment I send one into the tops, Benny will know I'm on to him. God, all this talk about subtlety is starting to make me think you don't want me to shoot up the place and disembowel him in public. What's the alternative here? Infiltration and then disembowel him? Sneaking into Benny's suite on the 13th floor would be very difficult. But not impossible. There might be guards. Certainly there'd be a sturdy lock on his front door. Oh, don't worry. I know how to deal with locked doors. I show them my 12 gauge and they politely open themselves. It's a very pleasant relationship. But assuming he's not in his room and is in fact molesting a tourist on the casino floor, what am I supposed to do then? If you were to approach Benny in public, you might be able to leverage his fear of exposure to make him agree to meet with you in private. And that's when I start the disemboweling. Ha, huh, I might actually pull this off. By the way, I'm not paying for the cleaners after this, so you might want to get a few hundred caps ready when shit hits the fan. Well enough. Be on your way. Acceptable losses, eh? Well, I have to say, I was not expecting to get actual endorsements for causing carnage on the strip, so I sure hope you know what you've let yourself in for. You run casinos, I shouldn't have to lecture you about investment at risk. Then again, you are the guy who invested heavily into lights and nothing for well-oiled doors or a monitor that doesn't flicker every half minute. The same thing goes for these security cars now that I think about it. I mean, I know it's just a display, but still. Be advised, the Lucky 3 is not open to the general public. Trespassers will be shot. Thank you. The general public? Uh, not to be snobbish, but I think I'm slightly above that now. The fact that I'm even here proves that I'm a VIP. Congratulations, partner. The boss has instructed me to comp you to the high roller suite. You can bring your friends too. Be like a little clubhouse for the gang you put together. Just bear in mind, you're the only one gets to see the boss. Any friends you got, they can wait in the suite. Enjoy the digs, partner. They're plenty fancy. Now that's more like it. There's word in from Camp McCarran that an attempt to bomb its monorail system was foiled by an alert civilian contractor. Security is being tightened. Casino floor. And there's no mention of who was responsible again. Why am I not surprised? I need to have a word with House about this once I'm done with Benny. Everyone needs to know who's responsible for that. And obviously, if he doesn't allow that, then I will have no choice but to make the killing really stand out. To the point where you can't even begin to cover it up. Huh, how much blood is in the human body again? 
Well, enough to make a mess of this entire ground floor, at least. Hey, you guys bankrupt yet? Oh, hello. Hey, you there. I have a message for you. It's from Ambassador Crocker. Very important. Here you go. Wait, who are you talking about? The Ambassador of the NCR? Holy crap, I stopped by to help every single outpost that came across at nothing, but I take one step into a derelict casino and this happens? Huh, <laughs> shit's getting interesting now. Oh yeah, you guys can go inside the setup shop. Victor can show you the way. Don't forget to wipe your feet before you step on the carpet. Nice. Can I order room service? Hey, as long as you pay for it, go nuts. Yeah, things are about to change around here. Do you hear that, Eddie? I hope you don't mind hanging out with other robots that are clearly more advanced than you, because we're going to be here a while. Now that I think about it, you should start probing House's network for weaknesses. If you find any dirt that we can use, then I want to be the first to know about it. Uh, what are you staring at? McCaffrey? The guy wanted by the Garrett's? Well now, I was wondering whether I should make some noise first. There is of course the advantage of being subtle until I reach Benny, but that's not really me, is it? I don't think denying who I am is the right way to go. What can I say? I'm very partial to grandiose entrances. This'll do nicely. Huh, so the Garrett sent you to track me down. What a joke. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know I was supposed to laugh. I do apologize, because you're right. This is a joke. It's a joke that someone like me is still having to deal with a rat roach like you. Well, here's something to think about. You're not gonna die tonight because of the Garrett's. You're gonna die because I want you as an example to everyone here. Now show me your murder face, maggot! I'd rather not waste the ammo, kid. But if you insist, draw. Oh, you are on. Aha. Way too slow. And just like that, the most predictable duel of the century is over. If you lost any money on this bet, you deserved it. Yeah, that's right, I just killed a man in public with an automatic weapon. What are you gonna do about it, huh? Nothing! That was just a teaser to the main event, so don't you wet yourself just yet, madam. <laughs>